What is the connection between Hashimoto's, Candida, and infertility? I'm here to explain. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell, and I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado. I'm also the creator of the 30-day online program called Nourished and Renewed with Hashimoto's. Welcome. So I get a lot of questions from my clients who have Hashimoto's about the connection between their gut health and possibly some of the issues which may be standing in their way from becoming successfully pregnant. I have Hashimoto's. And on my journey to have a family, I had three miscarriages. So this subject is really close to my heart. Today I have two children, but it wasn't easy because I knew that I had to work really hard, not just on my thyroid health and my immune system health, but also on my gut health. And for many, this can be challenging to draw those connections, especially if you don't have some of the typical symptoms that may be associated with quote unquote leaky gut. So today I want to explain that one of the underlying maybe root cause issues behind the reason why women who have Hashimoto's struggle with fertility can be because of microbiome imbalances, which that means the bacteria in the gut, and in particular, many women struggle with having an overgrowth of a certain type of yeast bacteria-ish. I won't, I won't go into too much detail there, but it is a normal yeast bacteria that lives in our bodies, but if you have too much, it can cause problems, and this is called candida. Maybe you've heard of candida before. Typically, candida or yeast overgrowth presents as a vaginal yeast infection. Not pleasant to think about. However, if you've struggled with these types of infections, you definitely know what I'm talking about. However, yeast and candida can be systemic and not just limited to the um, genitourinary tract or the vaginal tract or even um, certain types of yeast colonization that can take place uh, in the large intestine and rectum. However, these problems definitely um, are pretty widespread among women who suffer with autoimmune illness. So why is it that women who have Hashimoto's tend to be more likely to have candida or yeast overgrowth issues? It's such a great question. Well, the first thing that we know, and if you've been watching my other videos, we know that women who have autoimmune illness tend to have leaky gut, kind of at the upper level of some of the reasons why their immune system has decided to be wonky, right? So this leaky gut basically means that there are perforations in the epithelial lining. There may be increased levels of zonulin due to something uh, that's triggered by the body when a person is consuming gluten-containing foods. The gut can also be leaky because of things like birth control pills or chronic use with antibiotics. Even taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen can be problematic. Drinking alcohol also contributes to a leaky gut. Stress also contributes to a leaky gut. And many of these triggers of a leaky gut are the cascade of issues for women as they're developing Hashimoto's. It's the combination of a variety of things that kind of catch up with us, wreck our total health, disturb our immune system health, and definitely impact our thyroid health. So candida, which is a yeast that grows in our body naturally, and for all of us it's normal to have a degree of this, this bacteria that is living in our bodies. What happens is if you are eating too many of the wrong kinds of foods, or if by any chance you have some of these major triggers that have been unresolved, the yeast can overgrow and it can become systemic. A systemic yeast infection looks like a whole lot more than just a vaginal yeast infection. It may include eczema or rashes or skin infections or skin issues. It may also be related to some of the mood changes like depression, anxiety, even things like brain fog, memory, 
uh, cognition, etc., that a lot of women having Hashimoto's experience um, as some of the neurological side effects, and it could be rooted in having a yeast overgrowth in their body. Systemically also, it shows up as elevated inflammation. And so we know that inflammation is really one of those sort of backbone issues that affect women and men, but especially women with autoimmune illness as it pertains to becoming pregnant. So this is kind of where we start to connect the dots a little bit, which is that women who are dealing with Hashimoto's have a degree of leaky gut, may be more prone to candida and yeast overgrowth. Therefore, these types of pathogen overgrowth, these types of pathogen overgrowth issues definitely can lead to some changes in a woman's fertile environment. So the first thing is that yeast overgrowth, especially at the systemic level, you know, it definitely changes the pH balance in the body. And pH, especially of the vaginal tract, is really important for the ability for a partner, a woman's partner's sperm to be able to thrive and to reach the uterus and to reach the egg and enable conception uh, and fertilization to occur, resulting in a successful, happy, and healthy pregnancy. So if the pH balance is disrupted by pathogenic overgrowth of yeast and candida, this is definitely um, one of the issues uh, facing um, sort of the fertility challenge behind these two co-conditions. Secondly, overgrowth of yeast candida can affect the type of viscosity of the woman's cervical mucus. Now, if you're trying to conceive, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not yet trying to conceive, but you understand about candida, listen for a little bit more information because one of the um, fertile signs that a woman experiences around the time of ovulation is that there's a change in the type of mucus discharge that she experiences. And it's sort of that egg white sticky mucus discharge that indicates like all signs are a go for making a baby. And the yeast can actually make it go from more of that egg white kind of like fertile environment to more of a stickier secretion that prevents, again, sperm from reaching its target. So those two things, the acid environment and then also the viscosity changes can really affect a woman's um, chances of becoming pregnant simply because of the candida. Also, candida is really sort of one of those two sides of the same coin, chicken or egg, question marks as to whether or not a woman may actually have some hormonal imbalances underlying these conditions as well. So I've talked a lot about the gut issues, but we do know that estrogen dominance is also closely related to having a candida overgrowth. And estrogen dominance in many women can take place because of years of birth control pill use. And so a woman has been taking birth control. She's ready to start a family. She and her partner are ready to start trying. She goes off birth control and doesn't know what her hormonal status is or maybe hasn't had testing yet. And next thing you know, she and her partner are struggling with some of these fertility issues, maybe because of a host of reasons. As I've said, maybe it's the Hashimoto's elevated antibodies, the immune system, wonkiness, gut issues, leaky gut, yeast overgrowth, changes in pH balance to the total system, issues with those fertile signs around ovulation, and dealing with estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance means that even if there is potentially a normal range of estrogen in the body, it may not be counterbalanced by sufficient or adequate progesterone to create the balance in the environment, again, for successful conception to take place right after ovulation. Birth control pills cause this problem because if a woman has been taking birth control pills for a number of reasons, maybe, maybe to prevent pregnancy, maybe to quote unquote balance hormones as told by her OBGYN because of maybe um, polycystic ovaries, maybe because of acne as a teenager, maybe because of heavy bleeding and uh, irregularities in the menstrual cycle, a woman who's on birth control pills for a significant period of time is not actually balancing hormones, instead actually just suppressing the body's normal hormonal production by giving the same amount of synthetic, synthetic estrogen 
and sometimes progesterone as well, depending on the type of birth control, to just basically level out. So I'll talk more about birth control pills in another video at another time. But the issue really here is that women who have been taking birth control, they pull the goalie, so to speak. They're getting ready to start trying for a family. They may not know that these underlying conditions exist with their hormones. And again, it's the estrogen imbalance or perceived estrogen dominance that can cause some of those um, further disturbances in the gut and in the vaginal canal with an overgrowth of yeast and candida. So yes, I realize these are complicated issues and the title of today's video is that these things are connected and it is important to actually consider the detoxification process as one of your steps towards becoming successfully pregnant if you have Hashimoto's. So a lot of times when I'm working with my clients who are ready to start a family, it's really not just about, you know, one thing or another, like, hey, just 100% go gluten-free, and hey, stop eating sugar, and hey, focus on an anti-inflammatory diet. But sometimes we actually have to go to a deeper level to really look at what are the pathogens and what role are they playing in the systemic health overall of the body. Detoxification through, the, through certain dietary strategies, as well as targeted herbal supplemental formulas to really go in and help clear out these pathogens deeply embedded at the tissue layer is really part of a strong preconception plan. These are not the types of detox strategies that you can just walk into your health food store and pick a box up off the shelf, go home, do the cleanse, and you're on your way. We're talking about at least a four-month period to help prepare uh, the health of the eggs. We're talking about a four-month period that is necessary for restoring gut health and for restoring the healthy balance of bacteria in the body as a means towards preparing that quote unquote fertile soil in the body to really be ready for um, optimal conception and a healthy pregnancy. So detoxification at home, the things that you can start right away, would be the removal of sugars and all refined carbohydrate products that may be basically breaking down into refined sugar in the body. So even if it's gluten-free, a lot of the processed and um, refined products that you may be consuming, baked goods, breads, pastas, rice, crackers, etc., although com complex carbohydrates um, in another category of carbs being important, it's the refined carbohydrates that can cause problems and feed the overgrowth of yeast and bacteria. So really take a look at your diet. Are you consuming too many refined carbs and too much sugar overall? That's one of the first things to think about getting out of your system and leading you on a path towards um, dietary detox of candida. Now complex carbohydrates are different, right? So fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, um, uh, gluten-free grains in particular, and products made from those grains, in addition to starchy vegetables, like yams, sweet potatoes, squashes, etc., those can be allowed um, in moderation to help support, uh, you know, total body health, including conversion of T4 to T3 in the body. I've talked before about the need for carbohydrates, and this is uh, still true in this case, but cutting back on the processed and refined carbohydrates is a great first step. Um, also, if you tend to be one of those uh, folks like me who really maybe loves a lot of the fermented products, including even kombucha, you may want to cut back on those yeast-containing um, healthful beverages. Yeast-containing healthful beverages even may not be the best idea if you're combating um, a yeast overgrowth. Um, starting with a supplement that you can get from the health food store called Saccharomyces boulardii. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I have this here just for today's video. Saccharomyces boulardii is a probiotic beneficial bacteria that you can take to help combat the overgrowth of yeast candida in your body. So this is just something, again, you can pick up at the health food store. This is um, 5 billion um, probiotic uh, cultures, CFUs, uh, per capsule. And I would recommend starting with something like this, uh, two capsules per day at bedtime to help uh, encourage the balance change 
in the gut. Saccharomyces really helps to kind of get things back in order. So cutting back on sugar, taking a look at the types of foods that you're eating, trying to stay clean um, and focus on those complex carbohydrates, incorporating Saccharomyces boulardii and working with someone who's board certified in holistic nutrition to incorporate some of the other more complex detox principles that may be necessary to really help you on your fertility journey. So this is, I realize, just kind of scratching the surface. Um, but I want you to know that if you are dealing with Hashimoto's and you know you have got gut issues, you are not alone. And you can work with someone like me and you can embark on a successful pre-pregnancy nutrition therapy program to start to feel your very best again. If you are interested in working with me, you can find a link in the pinned comments below to join me in a special, unique, individualized one-on-one -on -one nutrition program that we can do completely virtually to help you get ready for successful pregnancy planning. So thank you so much for watching my video. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share, and I'll be back with more videos soon. Take care.